I'm Tamika Hollis, a member of the Baltimore Museums of Industries Board of Trustees. I'm delighted to welcome all of you to this evening's program. We are so pleased to partner with Domino Sugar and the Gable Company to host this look at the iconic Domino Sugar sign and the work that goes into maintaining it. For those of you not familiar with the Baltimore Museum of Industry, we are located on the waterfront just south of Baltimore's Inner Harbor and just a couple doors down from the Domino plant. We are dedicated to telling the stories of workers and entrepreneurs who built Baltimore into a manufacturing powerhouse. <clears throat> Although we're always accessible virtually, we're pleased to reopen to the public on Fridays and Saturdays starting on July 3rd. We're thrilled to announce that the original dot above the eye measuring five feet tall will be on display in our Decker Gallery starting this summer. Souvenir pieces of the D will be available in the gift shop to support the museum's educational programming. Programs like this one are made possible thanks to the generous support of our members and donors. If you are currently a supporter, thank you. If you would like to find out more about becoming a member, I encourage you to visit our website, thebmi.org. Your support will help to ensure that we continue to engage people in conversations like the one we're looking forward to tonight. I am pleased to welcome tonight's guest to discuss the past, present, and future of the sign. Peter O'Malley, Vice President of Corporate Relations at Domino Sugar. Paul Gable, Founder, President, and CEO of The Gable Company, a Maryland-based visual communications company that specializes in the development, production, installation and maintenance of custom signs, digital media, and architectural graphics. Peter, could you just share a very brief history of Domino Sugar, the company, the plant, and the sign, and its presence along with Baltimore's working waterfront? Sure, and thank you for having us, and, and we are proud to be a, a long-standing member of the BMI. Uh, Domino Sugar Baltimore Refinery is actually owned by American Sugar Refining Inc., which is a subsidiary of ASR Group International. We are the world's largest refiner and marketer of cane sugar. The construction of the Baltimore Refinery began back in 1920, and in April of 1922 uh, began its first operations. And it was built here on the Inner Harbor for four reasons. One, is the deep water that the uh, Port of Baltimore provides so we can get our raw sugar vessels in here from all around the world. Number two, we had a great rail network. We still use rail to transport our finished product, but now we have a great, uh, the great internet or uh, interstate highway system. Um, third reason is we're in a large metropolitan area, so we have access to uh, skilled workers and the most important reason we're located here is really proximity to market, not just the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic, but really the Midwest. Um, port of Baltimore is the furthest inland uh, port on the East Coast, and so we have great access to the Midwest markets. But today, our refinery employs more than 500 employees. We have 42 ships a year that bring in raw sugar that we refine at about 6 million pounds a day. We have about 25 packaging lines that produce more than 40 different products, everything from a little sugar packet up to uh, a two pound bag of brown sugar, 25, 50, all the way up to 2,200 pound bag of sugar that's used uh, at bakeries. So we're just a very busy place. We're happy to be in our 100th year here of uh, providing great jobs for Baltimoreans. Thank you so much, Peter. I learned something new. Paul, can you walk us through the process of replacing the neon LEDs and what kind of work has gone into this? Well, uh, I think what's important for um, everyone to know is it uh, wasn't just really a replacement of the neon um, with LEDs. Um, from the start, although that was the initial scope of work, that was outlined to us, we, we believed in the uh, opportunity um, of replacing the entire set of letters on the sign. The uh, structure was uh, sound and intact. 
needed some minor improvements, needed a new coat of paint, but the letters were in pretty deplorable condition. Uh, the letters, uh, which were constructed of steel, um, some of it had some stainless steel to it with a, a porcelain enamel finish, had de deteriorated greatly and uh, were actually even becoming a risk for uh, falling apart right up in midair. So uh, after show, showing that to the, our client, uh, Domino Sugars, we, uh, we showed them how we could uh, take advantage of some efficiencies, switching out some of the on-site labor for um, in the shop labor and making a whole new set of letters that were precise and sound and would give them uh, another 70 years of service as these initial letters uh, have. So uh, it was sometime back in uh, June of last year uh, that we made our pitch and presentation to uh, the people at uh, Domino Sugars. And uh, I think they really appreciated all of the ideas that we brought to the table, um, the way that we uh, solved the, the challenges of uh, planning out the project. Um, and what's, what's really funny is in the very beginning, we had three or four different ways that we were gonna get these letters up on the uh, structure itself, anywhere from uh, shipping them in on a barge uh, to lifting them, up, lifting them up with a helicopter to installing large uh, scaffolding um, uh, racks all over the roof. And uh, one of our, one of our uh, technicians in the company and uh, uh, self-proclaimed engineer, Bill Sackman, he came up with the really great idea yeah. of utilizing the elevator shaft um, of getting these letters up on the roof. So uh, that was one of the major hurdles that we had. And uh, we simply designed the letters um, in pieces um, to be assembled up on the roof um, after they were, uh, they were manually lifted um, uh, with, um, and taken to the elevator up on the rooftop. And uh, we stand here today talking about it. And today's a monumental day for uh, Peter and Domino Sugars and Gable, because we have now completed the entire installation. The final border was installed today. The S was installed. The D was installed yesterday. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, and, and we really, our goal, of course, in, in working with Gable and taking a very close look at this sign was to ensure that it lasted for generations to come, that we could make sure that it stayed lit. So uh, guiding this whole project was, first of all, maintaining the same appearance of this, this iconic sign. We also wanted to make sure that it was more sustainable. Um, staying fully lit was very important. If anybody you know living in Baltimore knows that not all those letters are lit at any one time. So we wanted to make sure it stayed fully lit and we wanted to make sure that it was built to last for at least another 70 years. And, and Gable has done a tremendous job in, in giving us a, a really uh, sound sign here. Peter, it, when was the last time that that sign was fully lit? I, I don't even know the answer to that question. I think it's probably been a couple of years. Uh, you know, we've had trouble with transformers. Uh, they've all been replaced many times. We actually, rewired the sign about uh, three or four years ago. It's a lot of maintenance to keep it on, uh, but it's something that's very important to us and, uh, and to Baltimore, which is, is why we're doing this, this project here. And what we've had up there from you know 1951, actually it's interesting, the, uh, the refinery was built in 1922, but the sign didn't come along until 1951 but it has 650 neon tubes. And Gable calculated that that's about uh, 4,400 linear feet of tubing. And a neon tube is very fragile. Uh, it's not very reliable. And as time went on, it just got worse and worse. So we're happy that uh, we're taking advantage of this new technology that we have now, and, and then the lights will stay on. You know, I was reflecting back on when Paul was talking about um, assembly because I'm, my husband and I are building a pavilion outside and I helped him raise part of the roof. And so I, my hat's off to your team because that was a lot of hard work and it came in pieces as well. 
What has been the response from the workers at Domino Sugars, Peter? They're, they're very excited. We've been giving um, updates on uh, along each step of the way. Uh, we went to Gable and took pictures and, and posted that on our video screens inside the refinery, letting people know what's happening. So um, they, they've been very pleased. Um, you know, this is, this is a, an investment for us, but each year we have lots of uh, big investments in the plant, uh, capital projects. Uh, so this is just one more of them. And I think it makes employees feel good that the company is investing in the Baltimore refinery. And uh, that means job security uh, going forward. So, uh, but everybody's thrilled with the sign and uh, there's certainly a sense of pride from, from you know, our employees all the way up to, to ownership and everybody's very excited about it. Well, there's been a lot of improvements along the waterfront. I know um, we repainted a, a BMI, the um, crane outside, and we involved the community to really um, determine what color we were gonna paint. We had a whole campaign around it. What is the community, the Baltimore community? Have you had any um, outreach from people around the signed um, updates? Yeah, well, we, um, very early on, uh, we thought it was important to, because this sign does in a way belong to Baltimore. We thought it was very important to be transparent all along the way. So when we announced it with an article in the Baltimore Sun, we also put a post on our, our Facebook page, letting people know exactly what we were doing, uh, why we were doing it, um, you know, the timeline for it and what they could expect when it was all done. And so We've really been faithful to transparency throughout the process. And that, that was one of our, I think it was the most popular post we've ever had on the uh, Refinery Facebook page. Uh, so there's been great interest as the letters came down. And then when the letters went back up one by one, uh, it's really, we knew this was gonna be a big story and uh, knew there was gonna be a lot of interest, but even we're surprised at, at the reaction we're getting. And it's, it's so positive. And, uh, you know, people share their stories about growing up in the neighborhood and seeing the sign or people who moved away from Baltimore who remember the sign. Um, so it's, it's really great. And it's, it's really heartwarming to, to hear the reactions we're getting from the community. Tamika, I was out on the, uh, the pier yesterday uh, watching the D go up and uh, a couple uh, a couple uh, on their bicycles uh, rode up to the pier and came out and uh, brought their cameras and they started uh, setting up to be taking pictures. And we got into a conversation and they had just moved to Baltimore six months prior. And, and so they didn't know the, they didn't know a lot about the history of Domino's, Domino Sugars and, uh, and Baltimore, but they have learned and they've become fascinated with this project. And they knew almost as much about that sign project as I did. I was pretty amazed. But uh, it, it's, it's really, really amazing. I mean, I, I've been in this business for 41 years, and I've never seen so much hype and, and community interest in a sign project. Um, so this sign definitely tells a story that goes way beyond all of the, the sheet metal and the and the welding and all the lights and all the people that made it. The, uh, the, this, this community, we've, we've captured the attention of an entire city without a doubt. And uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty wonderful. And uh, you were asking earlier, uh, you were asking Peter about his people. I have to tell you, our, our, our people in our company, we've, I don't think we've ever had such a morale booster in our company. You know, COVID has had um, a pretty uh, draining effect on people. And there's just this negative, um, you know, negative uh, weight on a lot of people's shoulders in, in, in the factories and plants and, and offices uh, just because of all the effects of that. But I'll tell you, this, this sign, it may be a bright light for Baltimore City, but it has been a bright light for our company because our people have just really, really enjoyed uh, putting their handiwork onto this project. And we've, along with the people from ASR group, we've had lots of other 
of uh, people request to see the project in progress. And uh, we've enjoyed the attention as well. So it's uh, definitely been a, a booster here. And Tamika, and this is, this is a pretty big undertaking for us. And we know that we have to get this right. So it's good to have experts like Gable working with us. And it's good to know that it's just as important to them as it is to us. But we did some things um, early on just to make sure we were getting this right. And one of them was building uh, full-scale uh, aluminum mock-ups of pieces of the letter. We actually attached it uh, to the sign. There were two different pieces testing different colors of LED tubing. And we lit them up one night for a brief period of time, took lots of pictures, made comparisons, uh, checked the colors. Uh, so that's one of the things we did. Uh, we also um, found the original yellow color of the 1951 letters and we were able to match that exactly. So we warned people that the letters are gonna, they're gonna look a lot brighter and that's because they are. They haven't been faded and discolored over seven decades. Um, and then an, another thing we did was we, we tested various uh, LED lights to make sure we were getting a good match to that orange neon that we've always used. So six uh, colors, right, Peter? Right. And Gable walked us through that and uh, we're confident that uh, we're really going to, um, you know, match that original appearance and, and be faithful to that original design. And Peter, I think another interesting thing, we, one of those six samples was exactly what was up on the sign um, at that time. We, we did, one of those six samples was a neon sample uh, because we wanted to get it right and we wanted to get it as close to that as we possibly could. Right. And Paul, um, a lot of people have asked us if we can change the color because a lot of LEDs change color, but uh, we can't do it with this, and there's a good reason for that. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, LED sign lighting has been in the marketplace for about 17 or 18 years. Um, it, it started, uh, it started uh, coming onto the scene, and of course, at first it was used only for internal lighting. Then uh, someone got the bright idea of creating um, LEDs embedded into uh, plastic tubing. Uh, th this is a special lighting technique. These are silicon tubes um, with embedded LEDs inside of them. There's also a product that has an RGB feature to it. Um, it's called red, green, and blue. And um, when you combine those colors, you can make practically any color you want. We were not confident that the technology and the uh, color changing was going to be as reliable as, uh, as what uh, a company like Domino would want for their company. So we wanted to go, we, not just us, uh, Domino wanted something um, that was reliable, clean, uh, clean looking, and uh, really no frills. They wanted to reproduce the, the brand mark that was up there as it was. And uh, it, was a, it was a pretty simple decision what to go with. However, we did look at the color changing capability, um, capabilities of the uh, LEDs, and we just uh, all agreed that it wasn't really a good move to go in that direction. In the tubing that we did select, it mimics the look of neon because it shines light in more of a 360 degree pattern rather than straight out like a lot of traditional LEDs. Exactly right? that. That, I forgot about that reason. In, in one of our tests with the LED RGB lighting, uh, the lighting did go, just was limited to what came out directly on, this, on the horizontal surface of the tube. Uh, the lighting that we selected, um, we have lighting that goes all the way around the tube from one side to the other, which gave it a much more um, accurate uh, reproduction of how true neon illuminates the sign structure itself. So that's interesting. I, I didn't know that you could actually make so many different colors from that using those neon. Did you think about how over time the sign, will, will the technology keep up? I mean, with the neon that you have now, will it be on 24 seven or it just comes on at night? 
Yeah, the uh, the sign is lit every night from uh, dusk until dawn, and uh, it's been that way uh, since it was put up, except for a few years during the uh, oil crisis in the 70s. Um, but, you know, we've made some changes to this sign and these uh, uh, for safety and ease of maintenance going forward. Uh, for instance, uh, it, it's a lot safer now to work on the sign, um, the work that Gable did. And maybe Paul, you wanna talk about the access panels and, you know, in decades in the future, if we need to uh, make any updates or do maintenance, how much easier that's gonna be with the uh, the trolley system and other things. Well, um, you know, it's the power of teamwork. Uh, when the people at Domino Sugar Sugars got together along with Gable, we uh, we started talking about ways to improve um, the structure, um, the ways to improve the letters, ways to improve the accessibility, not only for the safety of uh, the men. Um, going up and uh, working on the sign, but also the ease of the maintenance. We made all access hatches on the on the back of the letters. Um, there will be, you know, very, very few times will it ever be required that people have to go out to the front of the sign. Um, there were new uh, walking planks installed onto the structure. There is also uh, a new trolley system at the very top of the structure along with a new basket uh, that's OSHA approved. The, um, again, it's a, it's a like new, it's a like new structure with brand spanking shiny new letters. And look, we're looking forward to the 4th of July lighting when they uh, shine over Baltimore again. Will there be a special ceremony, Peter, to kind of announce the new sign to the community? There will. We're working on something right now. We're not ready to announce the details, but we should we should be getting out that information uh, later this month. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do something special uh, to uh, to bring it back to life. Peter, do you think the entire city of Baltimore will appreciate what's going to happen that evening? I hope so. We put a lot of work into it, and uh, we want Baltimore to be pleased with the result, but. Uh, from the comments that we're already getting back today, without the lights, uh, it looks to be a success. So we certainly hope so. That's wonderful when the community rallies around um, the structures and companies within, within the community. This, this couple that I ran into yesterday, you know, you would have thought someone gave them a million bucks. I mean, they were so happy about the sign, and they they spoke about um, the hope that this sign brought to the city of Baltimore, and and uh, I asked them, you know, to to uh, further explain that to me, and you know, with some of the things that have happened in in Baltimore in the recent pa past, they were just really really uh, positive about this sign. Um, bringing back um, a positive energy to the city. Um, it's going to be new, it's going to be shining, uh, bright, it's going to be the beacon uh, for the city. It's the, it's the biggest sign in Baltimore, it's the best sign in Baltimore, and it belongs to Baltimore. Sounds like, uh, as an engineer myself, this sounds like a great project to work on. Paul, can you talk a little bit more about the planning that went into this project? Well, I wanna say um, with, you know, we were under the gun. Our company was under the gun because we knew we were working for some really brilliant people um, at, at the ASR group. Uh, they, had, they had umpteen engineers, uh, I think, looking at this project with us to make sure we got it right on paper um, before we ever started, uh, you know, building a thing. But uh, I, I'll tell you, my team uh, came through uh, from the excellent project management to the uh, CAD engineers who really, again, a lot of people think of our, our industry as an industry of artists and craftsmen, but there's a lot of engineering that goes into these signs. 
especially one that's 70 foot by 120 foot that needs to sit on top of a 10 story building. And uh, it's, it's, it's really, I, I just get a huge grin on my face because I think about all the logistical challenges on this project. And someone, someone recently asked the question on social media, why are they putting the letters up on the right side of the sign first and moving over to the left? That's not how you write a word out. So why don't they start on the left and work to the right? Well, there's a really good reason. And it was simply, we didn't want to work over top of uh, each letter. We wanted to go start on one side and move backwards. So we never had to cross over our work. But there was another reason too. It was the way that we got the letters up on the roof. There was one spot on the rooftop that we could move each section up to the next level of the roof with our, with our, uh, with our trolley crane. And it was that little corner and it wasn't big. And each section of that letter was moved up there. And then we brought the, uh, brought the section of the letter, put it up on the roof, assembled it, and then lifted it. So again, I wanna just uh, you really give, uh, give kudos to our engineering team uh, led by Bill Sackman, our, our CAD uh, designer engineer, uh, Steve Mon just did an amazing job with, uh, with all the planning on the project. And you know, even some of the guys in the plant who were making these, uh, these enormous letters, they came up with ideas to make the project go more efficient and smooth. Uh, Peter, you were, you were there, you visited our plant on a number of occasions. I know I pointed out to you all of the engravings on the faces of the letters that gave us uh, you know, pinpoint accuracy on the layout of the lighting to, um, you know, again, to, to make those letters uh, precise, legible, and of the highest quality you could ever ask for, uh, for a, a set of letters that large. So a lot of planning went into this project, a lot of collaboration, um, you know, dozens of people uh, contributed to that part of the project and another couple dozen worked on it, put their hands on it right here in the plant. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be developing, um, you know, a, a video in the near future on the, on the story of this project to give a, a little bit more of a, a real life visual of uh, what it was like to work on this project. And I think it will tell it far better than my words can. Uh, Tamika, we have some challenges on our side too. And that is that this sign sits on top of a working sugar refinery that runs three shifts a day, uh, 24 hours a day. Um, so we had a great team on our side with our vice president uh, for corporate engineering, Rich Baker, who actually used to be refinery manager here also, uh, Tom Chagan, who is a corporate engineer and project manager, uh, and then uh, Ron Brack, who's our procurement officer, and they all worked uh, you know, very well together to get this project done, but we also had to coordinate with our, our folks in the warehouse because we had to move the letters through the warehouse uh, early in the morning on lighter days uh, before we started using the elevators to move product and, and packaging. So a lot of moving pieces and it was a, a challenge uh, to do this project while also making and shipping out sugar every single day. Um, but, but everybody rose to the challenge and everyone was excited about the project. Um, so we're happy with the way it's gone and uh, just a few more weeks here. Home stretch. We're excited <laughs> about lighting that baby up, aren't we, Peter? Yep. Yeah. So, Paul, what's one takeaway you'd like the audience to know about this sign project? I think the most important thing that, um, that all of us here at Gable would like for um, the city of Baltimore and the people at ASR Group to know is that we put not just our hands on this sign, but we put our heads and our hearts into this work. And we wanted to make this project um, as 
to go as smoothly as we could. And we also wanted to be as beautiful as it could be uh, because we know, we know how important the sign is to the city of Baltimore. And uh, we take great pride in not just uh, the final outcome, but also uh, the way we work to make it happen. And uh, I, I um, so far, our team has over-delivered um, from my vantage point, and I'm really proud of that. Thanks, Paul. Peter, what's one takeaway you'd like for all the audience members to know about this sign project? Well, I think it's that, uh, you know, Domino Sugar is, is here to stay in Baltimore. Uh, we're in our 100th year here. We, our anniversary is this, this April. And uh, we couldn't think of a better way to recommit ourselves to the city of Baltimore than by restoring this beautiful sign that that really is Baltimore's welcome sign. I'm looking forward to seeing you. If you're interested in learning more about this sign, I'd like to encourage you to explore the BMI's online collections. Take a look at the new domino sign from our waterfront campus and explore our industrial rich heritage through South, the South Baltimore in the shadow of industry self-guided walking tour. We'll add links to this chat and thank you for joining us. I'd like to thank Paul and Peter for joining me this evening to talk about the Domino Sugar's new sign. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs>